What's up guys? In today's video, we're going to talk about the do's and don'ts of a successful off-season. with the do's of a successful offseason. I see this happen all the time where people don't really know what to do after they're done competing. You know, they had the plan when they were competing. If they had a coach, they it knew exactly what they were doing. And maybe they didn't really have to think for themselves. Typically, a lot of people don't work with a coach in their offseason. Uh, they only do it in contest prep, and, and for good reasons. I can see why. Uh, but in reality, the offseason is where a lot of the work actually gets done, and that's how we improve. Uh, so we're going to go over some of the do's of a successful offseason. And the first one, it seems like a no-brainer, uh, but it is actually actually eating in a surplus. Now I feel like guys more often than not don't have a problem with this uh, because guys tend to be a lar lot larger of eaters than ladies, um, but we have to make sure no matter what we're trying to do we are in a caloric surplus uh, because in order to build and sustain muscle we have to make sure that we're eating enough and being a surplus. If we're in a deficit we're going to continue to waste away and not be able to gain as much muscle as we really should be. Up next is actually training with a purpose. So like I said uh, just a bit ago when we are in contest prep we seem to have everything laid out for us. We know exactly what time we're going to eat, what muscle group we're going to train, how many reps we're going to do, how many sets we're going to do, and what angles we're going to hit the muscle at. But in the off season, I see that a lot of people just really don't know uh, what they're doing with their training. And it's unfortunate because people tend to get lost and that's how progress, you know, it really doesn't get made in their off season. So if we want to focus on things like lagging body parts, if we get feedback from the judges saying that, you know, for example, my chest is weak or that I need more upper body mass, these are the things that I'm going to be training with a purpose in my off season. Up next, we want to instead focus on more positive visual changes. So I'm not chasing a number on the scale, I'm looking at, you know, is my back developing more? Is my chest developing more? Are those lagging body parts coming up? I think a lot of people get caught up in uh, chasing the scale and they forego the visual changes because we get so focused on the scale during contest prep. Uh, the scale is great for prep, but in the off season, it's always secondarily to the visual changes going on and our strength changes. So we wanna make sure that we're really honing in on both of those. A big one that a lot of people miss the boat on in the off season is they fail to flip the switch from contest prep to off season in regards to their food, the way that they view food, I'll say. So in, in contest prep, obviously, we are very, very focused on what we're eating. Uh, like I said, what time we're eating it at, the amounts and everything. We know everything is to the gram. In the off season, although we can still be very, very precise and we still need to eat with a purpose, we need to be a little bit more relaxed with our food intake because this is how people get burnt out in bodybuilding is when they eat exactly the same like they do during prep. You know, they eat the bland foods because they think that it's going to you know, be the most optimal optimal for them. Well, in reality, we could be a little bit more relaxed in our off season. You know, we could still guesstimate the best of our abilities, still keep our body composition in check. But if an opportunity presents itself, you know, like we're going to go out uh, with my family and go out to dinner and I'm not going to bring my food scale with me. Or if it's a restaurant that doesn't have their macros listed or their nutrition information listed, I'm going to be totally fine with that because it's an off season. I'm not trying to lose weight. If anything, you know, we'll see what my weight does over the next following days. And in reality, it's probably going to be fine. Uh, so don't get caught up. I know in this constantly seeking that you have to be perfect with your food in the off season. In regards to the same lines, I just encourage people to get out more. So just like in contest prep, I feel like a lot of us tend to be a little bit more reserved, tend to you know hide in our homes and not want to go out. Uh, this is an opportunity for us 
to go and hang out with our friends, to go and hang out with our family, to go do you know other things that we actually like to do besides bodybuilding, especially in the off season. And I know that we tend to be a little bit selfish, you know, when it comes to contest prep, and we tend to you know put some of those things to the back burner. But the off season is a perfect time to go and do these things that we enjoy. Now for the don'ts. A big don't uh, during an off season is constantly mini cutting. Now I know a lot of us, especially in the physique industry, are very visually oriented and for good reason. But we can't get caught up in constantly trying to look good throughout the entirety of the year. Now a lot of you guys know that I'm going to be in an off season now for probably a good two and a half years, three years plus, uh, because I'm not going to be competing for a while. So. I'm not going to be constantly mini cutting uh, just to satisfy my visual urges to try to look better. You know, like some people diet for the Arnold Classic or diet for any vacation that they go on. Uh, well, in reality, if your long term goals are going to be to try to become the best bodybuilder that you can be, if you're mini cutting every other month or a few times a year even, you know, you're really eating into some gains that you could be potentially making. So don't be mini cutting all the time. Up next, we want to make sure that we actually have a plan. Like I said before, uh, a lot of people just don't have a plan. You know, they fail to write anything down. They fail to track their food. They fail to track their weights. They just go into the gym mindless. Like I said, a lot, a lot of people are very driven when it comes to contest prep. But I see this all the time is when people go into the off season, they just don't have a plan. And that's where they really lose out on a lot of gains because although it's great to have a plan during contest prep and it's great to execute it, you know, if you're not executing a plan, a great plan in the off season, you're not gonna make any substantial gains that are gonna be worthwhile when you go to compete up next. Another big mistake that I see is people going off of the scale alone. So if I'm in an off season and I, I'm thinking I wanna get bigger, I'm just focusing on that number on the scale. So if I don't hit X number, then I'm a failure. And that's how we end up getting fat, and I've talked about that in the past, but we can't focus solely on the scale. Like I said before, we need to be a little bit more visually oriented. Another big mistake that I see is the amount of cardio that people do in their off season. Now, yes, cardio is great for general heart health, but you don't need to be doing four or five days of cardio in an off season. You know, dial that back down to one, maybe two days uh, in an off season because it's not the time you know to do a ton of cardio. And I know some people enjoy it, but we do plenty in contest prep. And the off season should be a time where we focus on our weightlifting and not our cardio. If you're someone that really enjoys doing their cardio, like I said, you can put one or two days in there at max. You know, you could do a couple circuits if you want to. You could run a few miles, uh, but this is not the time to focus on our cardiovascular nature. And last but not least, I see a lot of people being lazy with their training. And I think this is one of the biggest mistakes that I see overall for people in their off season as they, you know, leave no stone unturned in contest prep, which is great, which you should not because that's the time, you know, obviously where a lot of people see quick visual results and they're driven to work harder and harder and harder because of the visual changes that come every single week. In their off season, when people don't train with a purpose when they start to get lazy uh, because the results aren't as visual they don't come as quickly and as visually as we would like to in the off season because you know our muscles are buried under our layers of fat so when people get lazy you know they start skipping the gym they start you know not training uh, with intent they start not tracking their weights uh, and they start just kind of going to the gym mindlessly because they say well i don't have a goal right now well, I'm not competing right now, it's really hard for me to focus on what I should be doing or I'm just not motivated enough. Uh, so in, in that point in time, we have to become more disciplined uh, and less, you know, discipline over motivation is the common phrase that people say. Uh, we just have to be disciplined every single day when we go into the gym in our off season, we have to train with a purpose. So don't, if you find yourself getting lazy, you know, in our off season, just remember that this is the time that we need to, you know, build the muscle in order for us to make positive changes on the stage next time around. So guys, that is the do's and don'ts of a proper off season. Hope you learned something. I'll see you soon.